So thank you for coming. Uh, my name is David Lowe. I'm the data librarian here at Evans Library, and uh, we wanted to present something for grad students who may be graduating here before the semester's over, uh, a, a workshop for uh, finding grants. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for sharing your topics. Maybe we'll get to um, research some of them. So I thought I'd warm up with a quiz uh, about LOA. Do you know what LOA is? No? Okay, so that is a list of acronyms. So just we, we're big on acronyms in the library field. All right, so here are your acronyms. F and A, IDC, OSP, and TI. and that's the person who uh, is most responsible for writing the grant and administering it and uh, on the hook for the money and writing things up and all that. That's the PI, hiring grad students and all that fun stuff. So uh, what about OSP? Have you heard of OSP and grant related stuff? Um, they, everywhere I've been, that's what they call it, but they all say, oh, but we don't want to call it that anymore, so I don't know, but it's the Office of Sponsored Programs or Projects. I'll just put them all up here. Let's go. Um, Principal Investigator, Office of Sponsored Programs or Projects, that's where you have to, that's where you have to go through on campus to turn in the grant. Uh, they're probably going to hit the button. If it's a federal grant, they, they hit the button on grants.gov. Everything federal in the United States goes through grants.gov. And they have, um, they help you with that, and because you know there's compliance things that that they have to check if you do human subjects or um, you know animal testing or anything like that. That all has to be uh, very um, tightly monitored and fair civil. Okay, not to mention the budget, which is sort of what the next part is. F and A and IDC are actually the same. FNA stands for facilities and, and administrative or indirect costs, which is where you get the IDC. And um, some people call it overhead. It's the percentage of the grant that's added on top of what you need that the university is going to take. And it happens pretty much everywhere. It's pretty common. Uh, and ac actually, FIT, it's pretty low at 45%. Uh, some places, uh, I think I was looking at Princeton, 62%. Um, Ivy Leagues, they're all like way over 50. It's, you know, it's you're paying for your electricity, for, uh, you know, just the infrastructure, basically. Yeah, but I just recently saw a report on the world financial Yeah, I mean, if you're really good at, at grants, and, and the reason, that rate is negotiated with the government, and so it will, your your uh, your percentage sheet that you have to reference in your grant. So where did you get that percentage? Well, here's here's what our institution negotiated. That is uh, with maybe with a different agency uh, at different places, but um, especially what I've noticed is if you have like a med school or if you do a lot of medical grants, you know doctors and hospital costs, those those guys, you know, they kind of drive the bus and those are huge. I mean, doctors make a lot of money, so you know it's it's huge costs. But uh, it kind of from from the perspective of a small time grant guy, uh, just writing a little, you know, few hundred thousand dollar grant or something, it looks uh, excessive, but it is uh, a part of life. So in addition to the money that you need, which is going to be your direct costs, and what you are contributing, which is probably going to mostly be your time or staff that you work with, their 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 time, a percentage of their salary. That's called uh, your um, cost share. So direct costs, cost share, and F and A are the three components of the bottom line. The, the one number that you submit to your funder is made of of those components. So anyway, okay, that's just some fun to think about uh, grants as you. Things that I didn't know as I was um, 
transitioning into uh, real work from grad school. So here's what we want to talk about today to get more focused. Um, you know your interests, put some of them on the board there. Those are your knowns. You know who you are, um, your experience, and your interests. And so we're going to structure the search strategy to take that known stuff we know to uh, find out, to solve things that we don't know. And the tools that we're going to discuss today will be ORCID. Have you heard of ORCID before? We'll talk about it. Used it. We'll talk about it uh, in a second. Um, good that it's probably it, it's not entirely unfamiliar. Um, uh, we will after ORCID. Be, the reason I'm talking about ORCID is because you can use that information in Grant Forward. It will pull information from there for you to uh, establish a good uh, help help you um, search for things that would fit your your profile. ORCID's a, a pro. A an academic profile tool. So um, Grant Forward is the source of uh, grant opportunities that we subscribe to here. Uh, and we'll also talk about uh, the indices Scopus and Web of Science. And they're very similar, and they have some quirks uh, on one side or the other that we'll go into a little bit. Okay, so here is my graphic for you visual thinkers. Um, here are the entities. So you, and that's you with the little FIT hat on there, so just so you know, uh, have an interest, as we've already established, and you want to do a project, a grant project, and you might collaborate with someone, so you have a collaborator, or you might need to know about collaborators who have specific uh, skills that would uh, mesh well with what you want to do. And uh, you get together for your project and you get money from some opportunity that is offered by a funder like NSF or something. Okay, that's the environment. Is that, we're not too far out. Okay. Uh, there are some, in, in addition to projects, while we're on Grant Forward in a second, we will also talk about things like travel funding or um, a postdoc or an internship or something. So we'll take a little side tour, but this is the main focus for Grant uh, finding grants. This is the the, um, the environment. Okay. And the other thing that you want to know about a project or write-ups about projects is the impact that they have. <clears throat> and so we can get into that a little bit. So that's the one other um, lightning bolt we'll add. All right. So textually, let's phrase it this way: so we do the visual way, and we'll do basically this is the same thing, but in words. So you know your research interests and your past work. So from that, who are the best funders with grant opportunities for those interests, right? Okay, also given my interests, who are some potential collaborators? And what got the most attention out of their work or the uh, opportunities of projects that came out of opportunities ago? Okay, now we know funders. That's a known now. Um, so what funder, what projects do those funders fund? And what what got the most attention out of those projects? Alright? Now that we know some collaborators' names, we can, uh, and, and even with NIH, you can look up their particular reviewers. So that might uh, be of interest uh, for our biomed publications especially. So NIH is the uh, National Institutes of Health and they give away um, uh, money for those types of projects. And any NSF does not, uh, you don't know who your viewers are, but we can look them up for an All right, so what projects have those collaborators or reviewers done, and of that, what got the most attention, right? So all of these things, unknown stuff, uh, we can solve with these databases I just went through. Okay, so I said we'd talk about ORCID a little bit first. I thought you should probably hear about it. If you're uh, at the stage of your career where you're thinking about grants, then you're at the stage of your career where it's okay to think about, or it would be a good idea to think about your ORCID. So it's a um, universal perpetual profile, sort of like a, a, an academic social security number, but one that you can share, right? So um, if you are active on academia.edu or ResearchGate or Mendeley, or um, you have a number of network uh, collaboration sites, then you may have a profile there, but it's kind of only within that universe. ORCID can go everywhere, as 
I said ago, it works with Grant Forward. In coming months and years, we're going to be using it with all of our faculty to pull their things into a uh, profiling system. We hope it's the, that's the plan. We've got some uh, made some progress on that over the last year. Um, but wherever you go, if you're not at Florida Tech, uh, it will probably be in use at some level or another, and it's a good thing. All of your stuff is in one place, your education, your employment, your grants. Uh, you can put, uh, not your articles themselves, it's not a repository to put the PDFs, but you can put the citations for your um, articles, conference papers, presentations, monographs, books, that is, uh, and other things that you, data, software, if you have something on GitHub, you can do, you can do that. Um, and, and, and link to link to those things. So many uh, funders and publishers are starting to request these. Uh, in the US, they uh, are not required everywhere. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation now requires them, but I know that you can put them on um, uh, most of the federal um, funders. Um, it's a non-commercial entity. Um, it's independent. We're members of here at Florida Tech, the library bought a membership, so they're not, we're not going to get bought out by, you know, Facebook or something, or Amazon. They're not going to, like, uh, buy this to mine for, um, you know, stuff to sell people to, to, stuff to s people to sell stuff to, yes. Um, it's not going to go away. It's, um, it's a good thing. And you control it. You um, can import stuff. You don't have to sit there and manually type stuff in, um, but you control it. So, Scopus and Web of Science, which we're going to talk about in a second, those index you know, 20 some odd thousand journals, and that's about it. They, they focus on their peer review journals that they are happy with, and they don't look outside of that. In ORCID, you can put whatever you want, and you can import from Scopus into ORCID, so you don't have to type everything. So it's a good thing, and there's one other thing I was thinking. But escape me, maybe I'll remember in a second. So. There is ORCID. Um, let's go back. Let's um, let's look at that real fast. You can just go to ORCID.org, and that's what it looks like for registering. You will have to agree to some things. Um, you know, their terms, just regular software kind of agreements. Here's uh, here's mine. You see, you do education. It's almost useless if you don't put your current employment, because here you are, Joe Smith, and I don't know where you are now, right? But uh, it's the, the yeah, that's it. That's the important thing is to disambiguate yourself from others. So NEH funding, I worked on projects, and here are some conference papers and article type stuff, and you can put stuff in there like that. And over here. If you have a Figshare, ResearchGate, Google Scholar, Twitter, um, or Mendeley account, then you can put those there. But it's a good thing. And moving on to the next item is uh, Grant Forward. I was going to show you how to get there. So you've probably used the library website, LFB. And we have, not ORCID yet, uh, maybe we should, but um, we do from one of our live guides, I know, but for these indexes like um, Grant Forward, which is a grant index, Scopus, and Web of Science, those are all linked under the A to Z databases. So there's that on our website, either up here or down here, same thing, it will get you there. And um, so here it is live in a browser, A to Z. G for Grant Forward, and we go there. And I've already logged in. You will have to uh, not only log in through tracks, but establish an account if you want to use the features I'm going to show. So I've logged in here, and uh, let's see, let's go back. Here's what it looks like once you've logged in, it recognizes you. And I was going to show you the piece about the ORCID stuff before we search. So researchers, my profile, um, let's see, 
edit my profile and this is where you can under research interests you can put that ORCID ID and it will um, update from there and here I have it set for every three months which is perfectly fine okay so that's just a little bit about grant forward um, so let's try some let's see if I'm missing something here on my uh. yeah okay I wanted to talk about it a little bit first so you can create a profile import from your ORCID stuff you can save searches in grant forward and generate recurring email reports from that search based on your interest so what are we searching by well of course keywords you can search by funders and some other categories and then on the left you know are how our facets usually work in database land um, for our online searching you can filter by things like deadlines amounts and other types and things just so you know if uh, if they don't have grant forward where you uh, go to next if you end up in another institution uh, for your next job um, pivot is another a very popular one that kind of competes uh, with grant forward all right so let's go to do stuff grant forward so we were going to do uh, Internal combustion engines or thermal fluids first? Which internal combustion engines? All right. Let's see. The one thing I would suggest on Grant Forward is you can do a from to deadline. Uh, since it does tend to have stuff for which the deadline's already passed. I think it's um, important to say, you know, you're going to sit down, you're not going to apply for a grant tomorrow. So maybe in a week or two, you might set the date just so it clears out some of the stuff that is, you say, oh, well, that looks great. Oh, the deadline passed. That's kind of disappointing. So don't even show that stuff. Let's go with April 14th. That's a good number, right? So SAE has some scholarship money. Looks like a couple there. DOD, Department of Defense. We'll have to put that on our LOA. DOD, Navy, uh, NSF does stuff in this area. More DOD. So that was Navy above, Air Force below, Air Force again, NSF. So how many did we get? We got 16. And some of them are, as we, as we said, are scholarships. Um, over here, one of the facets we could um, we could either say, oh, that's what I want. I just want the, the fellowship, scholarship, dissertation stuff. And that got us down to those two uh, SAE scholarships. Um, or we could also say, wait a minute, I don't want fellowships and scholarships. I'm done with that stuff. I want some real hardcore grant stuff and so that shows us this other um, where's our count 14 so so that's pretty cool um, some people and, and you just uh, so you can turn it on and say only this facet you can uh, right click it and say not this facet or you can just put it back in the uh, pack with all the others some people are interested in travel um, don't see any travel. Oh well, for combustion engines, you'll have to drive yourself, I guess, in your own combustion engine vehicle. Um, thermal fluid. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do prostheses next. We'll take care of our guests. You might be interested in a postdoc in something like that, right? You want to do a project? You, you yeah. have, you know, hey, I have something here. I'll be on something. Okay. Um, let's see. Prostheses. What did I have checked here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. I have it just travel, so that's part of the problem. 
Um, it's done, it does some, I think, uh, didn't the guy say they use, uh, uh, what's the big search tool? Anyway, I think that the search engine does stemming automatically. Um, I'm blanking on it. Yeah, but specifically, uh, it's not XTF. It's, uh, oh, everybody uses it, but that's okay. HathiTrust uses, uses the same. I'm, I'm, I'll remember later. But. Okay, so, uh, so you see it got prostheses there. Uh, but we could try, what you're saying is we could, we could stem our own. Prosthetics, prosthesis. We'll try that. Let's see if we got anything different. 25. Jaws. Huh. TMJ. Prosthetic. Prosthetics, prostheses. Okay, so uh, NIH is big on that, of course. Probably, oh, Mayo Clinic has its own something or other. One year fellowship. Uh, scholarships, okay, let's say, wait a minute, he doesn't really want the scholarships. So we right click there. What do we have, 25? So we're down to 19. Maybe some possibilities there. Translating basic research into tools. Yeah, might be, might be a path there. Do you mean? Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, early career. Does that sound right? Something like that. What do we got? Nothing. Oh well. So, there are some things. Um, library assessment. Let's do that. That's what that filter is for. Uh, I some of these filters I would take with a grain of salt because the data may not always be there properly, or there may be I mean, it would need to be in a field that it could facet on, right? And um, they, they may, the data might not be um, consistent across all these agencies or whatever that they're doing. But may, maybe I haven't explored that too much. But that's I think that's what that facet is for, as I understand. Um, yeah, that's not too much to go through. Uh, this is probably for just for Texas somewhere. So there's also this geography. Um, there's a geographic limiter and so um, I, I guess I guess if you wanted to put Florida to, to rule out yeah sorry but yeah it still kept that floor uh, smooth I don't know uh, like I said, some of these facets may not be perfect. I'm not sure to what extent the grant forward people um, really comb through and get consistencies across everything to make their facets work perfectly. I doubt it, but it's possible. Um, doesn't appear to be in this case, but so so that's something you might find. Let's try thermofluids just for fun. So let's clear reset. Let's do uh oh, nothing. Oh, 
I thought I cleared them. Ah, it didn't work. Reset all conditions. So DOE uh, has something. Oh, because I wanted to go into something. Oh, it expired. So that's what I was telling you about. You need to set that, but it reset that condition, which I told it to. I just forgot. But anyway, let's. let's so it has, you know, basic information on it, and then we'll take you to actually apply for it. Uh, information about it, and then the actual application. So a little bit of grant, about grant forward there. Uh, just some fun facts about federal funders while we're here, here, here before we go on to the um, demographic databases. Again, your OSB, your Office of Sponsored Program Projects, is going to uh, probably want to drive the bus and it will go through grants.gov. That's not to say you can't edit some things or probably, but that's the, um, the website. It's a pretty common thing to have uh, folks on the library staff who can help with that. Okay. All right, let's go to Web of Science. So, in our little uh, uh, going from knowns to unknowns, we said that we wanted to go uh, from our topic to interest to find funders and collaborators. So, let's see, Web of Science. We will go back to. Um, the library web page and A to Z databases web of science W there we go that's how you can always get there I should have logged in sorry I should have this ready but we get in and we're going to search our topics there Do let's try that. And see what happens. 
just a huge, yeah, 91,000 things. Okay, well, um, we can say, you know, I really only want some really recent stuff. So let's go with the last uh, year or two. So we'll refine that, get us down to what, 10,000 something. And um, this is where I wanted to point out. So we're going from the topic to your funding agency. So in Web of Science, here it is down here, and a nice and easy to find location. You see, with these 10,000, though, um, there are a lot of funders, of course, and you can go to expand that list. It's, it's done a pivot table, and it's showing you the top ones. But uh, you can now go into that record counted, record counted pivot table version with all of the things there and be able to scroll. Or you can do it by uh, alphabetical here. Because you kind of need to do that because um, Web of Science does have what I would call kind of dirty data. And if you're interested in just NIH, look here we have. National Institute of Health, singular. The actual term is institutes because it, there are several of them. And this one has NIH appended after it. So you see it's got some some problems. You'll probably even find another one uh, in there somewhere. Um, wouldn't be surprised. Oh, NIH here. NIHR might be it. I don't know. Let's include it. So anyway, so you know, it, what are you going to do? It's kind of um, messy some, but we can go through there and we can find, um, yeah, got it down to a more manageable number. And um, we just want to see what NIH is funding. And um, looks like a lot of stuff with materials for tissue, membranes and things. Uh, so you could dig further if you wanted to get into the um, um, IT side of it. Um, okay, so which particular? Yeah, so going into one, um, so we found, so we said we were going to find funders. We found funders, NIH and others. Um, we were going to find collaborators. Well, here you go. The authors of this article wrote this particular NIH grant. And uh, we'll look at the end. We'll see how to look this up um, through NIH um, sources. They also got DOE money, looks like, for some of this. So that's another funder to keep in mind. So you've got collaborators. Oh, what else? Institutions. So these folks are all at UC San Francisco. Some are biochem, some are pharmaceuticals. So a mix of these folks. So um, maybe you could correspond with them. They should have a corresponding author. Um, there it is, yeah, Ortiz is the is your corresponding author. So if you wanted to get in touch with them about their project, there you go. And so a lot of unknowns resolved through this search. Um, funders, collaborators, institutions, etc. Papers, yeah. Let me do that real fast. So, um, so you can go to the author. So this is why it's important to have a profile. Of course, you have a Scopus profile, which is what uh, um, I'm sorry, the Web of Science uh, profile, which is um, what what this is built on. Uh, but 
having done ORCID as we talked about at the beginning, um, it would help you clean that up as well, possibly. Um, so here's, oh, this person only has this one article. Let's see if the other Wadling has more. Just that one. Oh, and the third is probably not going to have any more either. Okay, so let's go back and find uh, something that's cited a lot. Oh, that was another thing we wanted to um, talk about was uh, citations. So you can set this to be what kind of NIH funded prosthetic stuff was highly cited? Well, um, here's one. It's even got the hot papers icon. And uh, so you know that that's pretty happening stuff. So Tong here at uh, somewhere in Australia. Oh, somebody from UNC, or I'm sorry, Duke is on there. So is that three? Let's let's do the Duke person. So three 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 is Van, is Fowler. So Fowler must have a lot of papers. Yeah, look at there. So you can look at other stuff that they've done. So collaborators, other interests, uh, and the impact was the other thing we said. So highly cited. That's impact. There we go. That was Web of Science. Scopus also does similar stuff. Now, to do um, sponsor searching in Scopus, this is why I put this little screenshot, you have to go into the advanced search and use the field code. So we'll do that in a second. But um, we'll go through the same sort of exercise with Scopus. Let's see. FIT.edu, A to Z databases, Scopus, here we are. Um, let's see, let's try thermal fluids over here, I guess. Ah, internal combustion. Thirty thousand documents. So let's say I only want the really recent stuff. And um, let's say let's say I only want the English stuff. Okay, got it down to fifteen hundred, mostly because of the dates. Um, so we can edit this search. It will take us into advanced search here. And we can do um, let's see. I think we can add it right here. Is that right? Uh, and if you can't remember what the code was, it's over here. Field code. Uh, I need to scooch it down a little bit because I can't get the scroll bar. Alright, so sponsor, wasn't it? Fund, 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 fund. Fund hyphen sponsor. Okay, and it gives you the information if you click on it. Uh, I was hoping it would send it over. Let's see, fund. stuff for internal combustions. Maybe energy, I don't know. Oops. Uh, I did something wrong here. I think, I think just the one at the end.
so we got down to 13 for NSF uh, last couple years. So that would be a nice manageable chunk to, and again, uh, you can sort by sided by highest to lowest to find your impact. And um, you can say these people looks like Illinois and a couple of Chinese uh, institutions. Um, and here's Timothy Lee. Here's his Scopus author ID. He's got 20 documents. H index is pretty good. That's a um, measure of, of impact. So he's got at least five papers with five or more citations. And here they are. Here's his other collaborators. And uh, we could probe um, more on Mr. Lee or Dr. Lee as a collaborator. UIUC might be a good uh, school to work with, um, and we already rank this as a high um, citation paper, so we know the in impact was, was good there. So, so they're doing um, more for the fuel side than the, the, in the engine design, but whatever. Um, you'll find what fits what, what you think is best. So, did we answer our unknowns pretty well, I think? Um, collaborators, uh, types of projects they fund, funders, and, and impact. So, covered all that, didn't we? Let's go back to slides and see what else I have to say. Insights. Oh, you can take um, one tool we have. Uh, it's pay extra for with Web of Science is um, Insights and I have, a web, yeah, I have a Web of Science um, search up here. You can uh, here save your oh that's sorting. You could say, I want to save the hits though, come on back. This is the prosthetics. All right, so here you can either save these to a citation manager like EndNote or RefWorks, or you can save to Insights. And uh, I already have something that I've saved to, so I'll go to that in a second. But it, and it takes a while for it to process it, but it packages up and sends it over to this analytical tool called Insights. I think I'm gonna have to log in. So the stuff that you save to analyze comes over to my folders, and uh, I believe this is my photo. I did a photogrammetry search, which had like uh, NIH and photogrammetry, which had their uh, uh, four documents. So you can come in here and uh, check the citations here and explore what Dr. Liu had done and um, and do some other uh, manipulations with it here. But these were all in. In Web of Science you could. Yeah, yeah insights is just for Just some 
taste of some possibilities. Um, you can also, we found the uh, project numbers and you can see through the interface here for NIH reporter. You could search by, by people uh, or if you have the grant number that is uh, here, project number, application ID, and you can find out more on those. What a lot of people, a uh, couple of sections of your um, grant, now it's not going to show you with the whole grant, but there are two, in addition to data management plans, there are two sections that people often have, often struggle with, and there aren't a ton of examples out there, but um, at least if you find something successful and you want to see what that grants, uh, research impact was and intellectual merit are the two sections of a grant. It's like a, what a page or so. It's a couple paragraphs probably each. And um, people always think, yeah, what are they looking for here? What works? You could find a successful grant that was highly cited and see what they said and kind of say, oh, okay, now I get the idea. I'll go write my own stuff off there. But you can find those through here. That's a. This is the NIH one and. <coughs> Here is the NSF. So, um, so in going from this huge unknown process, grant writing, funding, that whole search process, and how do I get in, getting through to the, getting the thing written? There are a lot of unknowns that 